Hello there, guys. Welcome back to another short online tutorial. Today, we are based in Photoshop, and it's Jack from Blue Sky Graphics. What I'd like to do today, guys, is show you how to create the torn paper effect within Photoshop. A very easy process in the sense of the step-by-step -step steps that you need to take to create this effect. Um, but as you can see, a very visually uh, strong, powerful image and you can use it across many forms of graphic design. And what I'd like to do today is show you the step-by-step -step process of how to create the torn paper effect. Okay, so what I have, I have the original image open up on uh, another tab, okay? Now, as you can see, I've got my layers window uh, available for me. If you don't find your layers, it's a simple case of going to window and layers like so. Okay, so I need to now duplicate this whole layer and there is a shortcut to do that. The shortcut to do that is Command J on Mac or Control J on Windows, like so. And then what I need to do is I need to sandwich a brand new layer in between our two images, okay? So I'm gonna to come to our little plus sign like so and add a brand new layer in the middle. I'm now gonna turn off our top layer with the eye icon there. Okay, so what I need to do now is I need to apply a torn paper effect across the middle of our page here okay and i'm going to do that using brushes what i've done is i've downloaded some torn paper brushes from the internet and if i go to my brushes window which is situated here as you can see I've, oh, this is all my brush libraries and all my brushes that are available to me and as you can see i'd like to use the second one here the one right at the bottom now let's make sure i'm on the right layer fantastic if you come over, you can see the brush is not big enough. I want it to cover the whole width of my image. So you can come up here and go sizing and manipulate it there. Or you can go to your brush window here and go sizing. But I'm going to use the shortcut to do that, which is the close brackets located next to P on your keyboard. The right one makes it bigger and the left one makes it smaller. So I'm going to continue pressing the right one so, so I can get it to cover the whole width. Fantastic. What I'm going to do is make sure my foreground color is white. And now I'm just going to one little click on the layer to create my brush stroke. OK, so let's turn our top layer back on. Fantastic. And what we need to do now is we need to clip this layer to the layer below. So we need to create a clipping mask. Highlight the top layer by clicking it and you can either right click on the layer and create clipping mask here or the shortcut to do it is option on a Mac or Alt on Windows. Hold it until you get to the icon there and you can clip and click to that layer below. Okay, now what I need to do is make an, uh, a black and white adjustment layer. So I'm gonna to come to our adjustment layers here and I'm gonna come through and add a black and white adjustment layer. Wonderful. Now the benefit of using an adjustment layer is it allows us to manipulate and dictate what type of black and white we want. So I'm gonna come through here, manipulate the color values just until I get the, the black and white I'm looking for. Perfect. And what I also need to do is I also need to clip this to the layer below. So I'm gonna use the same shortcut option on a Mac or Alt on Windows to create the clipping mask like so. Okay, as you can see, now we're starting uh, to get the effect. And what I need to do is I need to create a white sort of edge torn effect on each uh, side here. So I want to do it on the top one and the bottom one there like so. So yet again, what I'm going to do is add a brand new layer. Fantastic. And yet again, what I'm going to do is clip this to the layers below. Like so. Okay. And now with that, what I'm going to do is go back to my brushes that I was using earlier. All right, and I want to make sure my foreground color is white again. I just want to make sure the brush covers a little bit of the edge there like so. Fantastic. And if I come down to the bottom there like so also as well. There you go. And what I want to try and do is create some sort of sense of depth from the rips to the uh, gray image below. So what I want to do is apply some drop shadows to our top layer. So I'm going to double click the layer, which will bring up our layer style here. And as you can see at the bottom here, we have an option of drop shadow. Wonderful. 
There you can see the shadows really coming through now. And obviously you can change this and manipulate this to fit within your design ideas and requirements. Let's say I'm happy with this. And now I'm gonna press okay. And there you go, guys, that's how you create the effect. Now, what I wanna do is I just wanna add a little grain effect on top, okay? And what I wanna do is I don't wanna work destructively, okay? So I'm gonna highlight all the layers here by pressing shift on the bottom layer. As you can see, they have all been highlighted and I'm gonna duplicate all of these layers, okay? So I'm gonna press command J to duplicate. And then I wanna merge all of these layers together. The shortcut to do that is command E on Mac or control E on Windows, and there you have it, okay? So I've still got all the layers below available for me if I need to change or anything like that but I've got a copy for me at the top here for me to start to apply a filter to. So let me just turn off all the layers below because we're not going to use them at the moment. Okay, wonderful. And we're going to have our top layer highlighted like so. And then what I'm going to do now is first of all, convert this to a smart object, right click on the layer and convert to smart object like so. And then what I'm going to do is come to filter and filter gallery. Okay, so as you can see, we have a number of filters that we can apply. We can come through and apply a cutout effect if you're interested, paint daubs. But the one that I would like to be applying is a texture. So I'm going to come to the texture group here and I would like to use grain. Wonderful. Now you can see I'm getting that real sort of grainy textured effect. What I may do is bring down the intensity a tad. Wonderful, we've got different types of grain types here that we can use, but I'm gonna stick with soft. Let's manipulate the intensity a little bit. There we go, and let's press. Okay. And there you have it, guys. That is how you create the torn paper effect. If you're interested in finding out more about Blue Sky Graphics, please take a look at our website at blueskygraphics.co.uk. Also, there's some really cool work by our very talented students on our Instagram page at Blue Sky Graphics UK. And also as well, guys, take a look at some more tutorials that are coming out from myself and other tutors at Blue Sky Graphics, covering a wide range of topics and subjects within the graphic design and web design world um, that are really useful and helpful um, with your own creations. Thank you very much, guys. Take care and I'll see you next time.